I'm here to uh, talk about Go Mobile. You've probably heard the phrase, Go makes programming fun again. And I think that Go Mobile is the way to make mobile programming fun. I put again in parentheses because I'm not sure that mobile programming has ever been really that fun. Um, so first of all, I'm going to, um, I'll show you how it works in uh, later slides, but I'm going to be very specific and say that Go Mobile does many things, but in this talk it's about its ability to take your Go packages and generate a corresponding Java and Objective-C code for it, so that access from your uh, access to Go, your Go code from the rest of your application is much easier and much more convenient. So if you've ever tried to make a, Go, uh, a mobile application, you probably had to make it twice. So it's like sitting in a classroom and having a teacher telling you, "Here's your assignment. Do this, and you do it, and you made a good job." and when you're done, he comes down to you and say, well, good job, here's another one, just like it. So, and you just implemented your app in Java, and now you have to implement it again in Objective-C or Swift or whatever language they have right now, the Apple part. So I use Go Mobile just because it's Go, because I love to write programs in Go, but I think the most um, reasonable explanation, the most, re uh, the most objective reason that you should have for using Go in your apps is to know that you can take at least some of it and write it in Go and test it and debug it, and then you can use that once on two platforms. So for actually using uh, Go Mobile, I'll show you how some examples. I'll show you how to get it, uh, access to it, how to generate the bindings. And last, I'll show you some new features that made, makes it possible for you to use Go for even more of your uh, app. And I'm going to be a little quick about the slides, just to give you a taste of it. So don't worry if you miss some of the details, because it's just meant to tickle your, um, uh, your curiosity enough for, for you to, um, to want to play with it and use it in your own projects. So to start with, you, can, you get the Go, your Go Mobile tool, um, as you would get any other tool, uh, Go tool, Go-based tool, and you initialize it. Initializing is, is required for it to pre-generate, pre-compile, and pre-fetch um, uh, some, some packages and, and the NDK in the Android case so that you, your subsequent invocations of this command will go much faster. The next thing is that you can, of course, use it. And the most basic use of Go Mobile Bind is that you give it a, a set of packages and you give it a target and you run Go Mobile Bind on it. And, and for Android, you will, get, uh, you will get an Android archive, which is just like the library projects that you would normally use in an Android project, so you can integrate that in your build process. For iOS, you will also call Bind, and you will get back a framework for you to use in your Xcode projects, or whatever else can read and link, uh, use and uh, link frameworks. So using it. Everything here I'm going to tell you is in, in this section is going to, is is pretty old news. Go Mobile has been doing this for quite a while, but I still include it for you to see that it's really that easy to have your Go code and use it from from your native app, from your mobile app. First thing are functions. If you have a Go package package and a function that is exported, Go Mobile will generate the bindings enough for you that allows you to import that package as a Java package and then call it as a Java function on the class that represents your entire package. It has to be on a package because in Java you can't have top-level functions or anything else. In Objective-C for iOS, it's the same thing. They just don't have any namespace, uh, a concept of namespaces, so every exported symbol type and whatever is prefixed with a generated prefix. Constants and variables works the way you would expect. Structs is a little bit more interesting because you can have a struct in Go, export a struct, and Go Mobile will generate the class for you, either the Java class or the Objective-C class, and you can call methods on it, as you would expect. Interfaces is slightly more interesting because they work a bit like the same way as, as Go structs, but you can, as well as using it uh, the same way as an, a struct, calling methods on it, you can have several Go implementations of this instrument interface and return that back to, uh, to your native code, to your, to your application. Interfaces also allow you to go the other way around. You can actually have a Go interface and 
Go Mobile Bind will generate that interface for you, and you can implement that interface or implement that protocol if you're in Objective-C land, and you can have an instance, native instance, implementing that interface or protocol and send that back into Go so that Go can call your methods that is really defined in the rest of your code, in the rest of your app. Errors are converted to the idiomatic way of using them on, on that platform, so exceptions for Java and NS errors for, uh, in Objective-C. So all this is good for taking some client-side logic or some business logic and packaging that up in, in a set of Go packages and reuse that across platforms by generating the bindings on top. However, I wanted to expand the use. I, ideally, I'd want to never write Java code again, or Objective-C for that matter. So I was investigating how to go from just having your business logic implemented in, in Go to have perhaps all of it implemented in Go. And you can actually come some of the way by just using the interface tricks I showed earlier, that you can, have, you can write an interface with a method on it that, that happens to match an API for the platform. In this case, we have the activity interface and the finish method. And if you implement that interface in Java, you can, call, you can send the, the, the activity into Java and into Go, and Go will be able to call that finish method and actually do things that you would normally do from Java. The same thing applies to Objective-C. But it's verbose. It's possible, of course, but it's verbose and tedious because you have to write an interface for every class that you want to have uh, access to in uh, in uh, in Go, and you still have and you have to write all the methods on that class, and of course the sum activity as you saw is implemented in Java. There has to be some entry point for it for the Android platform to to launch your activities. So the new thing that's now possible is that you can use you can import Java packages and Objective-C packages, as we shall see in the next slide. You can import it a bit the same way as you do CGO, where you import uppercase C, and then you get access to all the, 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 the methods and, and, and types and, and constants declared for C. You have the same thing in Java, except that Java is a bit more structured, so you, you, so you go import uppercase Java, and then the full path to the to the package you're interested in, or the type in this case. In this case, I have, uh, in this example, I have three types, object, integer, and system. And as you can see from, this, from the example, you can call static methods, as you would expect. You can allocate new objects, allocate new instances of a class, and you can call methods, decode, in this example, that takes a string and returns the object integer, not the int, but the object integer, and you can take that integer and call methods on it. One of them is int value. And the same thing applies down in the Objective-C frameworks. You can import with the magic keyword Objective-C, slash, and then the modular framework, and then the type that you're interested in, in accessing. And then you can call new, which is the same as alloc, and then init, you can call static methods on it. Date is a static method on in a state returning a in a state re representing the now. And you can call uh, methods on that object as well. Next thing is that you want to write custom classes in Go. So instead of always having your classes extend object, the default superclass, you want to have an activity in, in Go, for example. And you do that by, again, importing the correct Java package, which you're interest, interested in. You're interested in the activity class. And you embed that in your struct. And Go Mobile Bind will then, when it generates the code for this package, will notice this embedding and make sure that your Go activity class extends activity. And when that happens, you can use that activity as you would any other activity. So you can go to Android Manifest XML and declare that you have this activity called Go activity, and it will actually just work. And I've shown you how here how you can have a onCreate method that is the method that is called when the activity is first created and shown and you can get that call from into Go, and you can handle it in pure Go. The same thing applies to Objective-C, in that you can import a package. In this, in this case, it's a module UI kit, and in that package UI kit, there's a, a class UI responder. Embed that into a struct, and, you, and your resulting Objective-C class 
will extend UI responder. And UI responder has a method, presses began, and when that is called, your Go code will be called on that particular instance. And Go Mobile Bind takes care of all that for you. So the next thing you discover when, when I wrote it, a, a, an internal demo program for myself just to make sure that this actually works. I noticed that to really be useful, you have to have access to all your project dependencies, you have to have access to your resource identifiers, all the R classes, and you have to have access to the data binding library. So to, to uh, enable that, there's now a there's been a plugin for, the, for Cradle for quite some time, but now it supports direct integration with the Android plugin. So that if you, def if you apply it after your Android plugin in your build grade file and configure it with the packages you want to, to bind, it will be, the whole build process will have this generation and compiling uh, done for you automatically. And as an extra bonus, you now ha have, depend have access to the dependency of the project. So as well as having access to the entire platform API, the Android API as such, you also have access to the class path of your dependencies. And normally, for example, in this example, you have app compatibility. Normally, you want to extend that in your activities to have access to new API features on older Android versions. And that's supported now. You can import it, just as you would in, in Java. And you can mark it as extending that uh, app compat activity class, and it will work. Next thing is that you want to have access to your R classes. There's our string for string resources, our layout for layouts, and colors, I think, and some other things. But in this case, I'm, I'll show you how to, I'm showing you how to access the string resources. So you have an R class um, generated from this strings XML, among other things. There's a string called activity title, and it's got a, an actual string in it, depending on which country you're in and so on. And you can import that generated class with import Java and your application uh, package path, and then uppercase R, which is the, 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 the outer class of all these uh, resource classes, and then string, because you're interested in the string resources. And then you can call, in this case, I've shown you how to call set title, which is a method on activity that takes a resource and then sets the title of the activity. You will notice that in the previous slide, there was onCreate1 instead of onCreate, and in this slide, it's set title underscore uppercase i, and that's because in Java you have, uh, you have method overloading. You can have the same method, same name for a method with different parameters. And to adjust for that, to, to compensate for that in Go, you have to Go Mobile Bind will rename all these methods that have the same name, either with uh, a one, two, or three, with it, which is the argument count, or the actual types, if there are more than one method with the same number of arguments. It's not pretty, but it works. This, the last example is the Android data binding library, which is the most complex example, and also the last thing I'll show you. That allows, if you know Android data binding, if you don't know it, it's a way to have your layout files, which are normally XML anyway, and embed variables into it, and, allows you to, uh, and that allows you to uh, access directly to bind events for your layouts elements to, uh, to those variables functions or methods. And you can go the other way around. You can have labels that which, which value would be determined by one of these variables that given in the, in the layout. So an example is this. You have one uh, layout with one variable, act, which is a type, which is, has the type go activity. And you have a button, button whose on click handler is bound to this variable's click me method. And in your go code, in your onCreate, you uh, inflate the activity main layout, and you can set that variable act to this, which is an instance of uh, go activity. And in that case, the, acti the variable is set. When the button is clicked, the, on, uh, the click me function, the click me method will be called for you, and you can again handle all this entirely in Go. There's no Java involved here, only the thing that Go Mobile uh, bind generates for you. So, Go Mobile is great, but I also want to mention some of its, um, some of its uh, gray sides, gray areas that you have to be careful to, to have in, at least have in mind when you're using it. Uh, it's, it uh, Go Mobile itself is still a, an, a marked as an experimental project. 
there has been changes and they're getting rare and rare, but there will be changes from time to time that, that makes some of the bindings be generated in a slightly different way. Of course, there are also bug fixes. So you might have to, some, from time to time, adjust the use of those bindings from the rest of your application. And Go binaries are large. I think the same thing came up in the Go4JS talk. Uh, so make sure that you have a, a considerable, you plan for having a considerable, considerable amount of Go code included in your app so that the cost of having these large binaries and the runtime and everything else is amortized across all your code. And the last thing, which is surprising to Go and Java developers, but not so much for Objective-C developers, is that to, in order to handle references passed from Go to the other side, Java and Objective-C, and back again, Go Mobile has to track all these references, and it does that with reference counting. And with reference counting, a classic problem is that it can't, in, by itself, handle reference cycles. So if you have a Go object pointing to a Java object, which in turn points back to that Go object, you have a reference cycle, and th that cycle will never be freed unless you manually cut one edge of that cycle. So it's no longer a cycle. I recommend doing it, if you have activities, I recommend doing it from on destroy, which is the way you clean up stuff. You can just nil the pointers back to Java, for example, and then you know that you no longer form any cycles. So, in summary, You've been, for quite a while, been able to export Go packages as Java to Java and Objective-C. And now you can access the platform, direct, uh, platform API directly just by importing it, just as you would for CGO. You can uh, write classes directly in Go. So instead of just have anonymous classes generated, you can have, in fact, generated classes that extend or implement just the, one, uh, just the other classes that you want. And on Android, it's the GoBind plugin makes sure that you have tight integration with your, the rest of your Android project so that you have access to project dependencies and resource classes and, uh, of course, the data binding library, which I find very useful. So, thank you. I hope that you're going to use GoMobile for your own project or at least consider it or play around with it. And um, thank you very much.